case, all right? So Megan Sansa is back. Uh, I've been instructed <laughs> uh, to stop at 11.30. <laughs> Sister Leland instruction. <laughs> You'll be teaching uh, baptismal class, right? Okay. But I don't promise I can do that. <laughs> but anyway, I'm a man under um, authority. Uh, in fact, all of us should be. We are under authority of God, of course. Sometimes God uh, exercises His authority through men and women. In the church, there has to be order. Okay, so when she said uh, 11.30, I said, yes. But just now, I was counting. Your testimony took me 15 minutes. Tony took me 15 minutes. Uncle singing took me another 15 minutes. It's all gone already. Anyway, it has been a very busy morning. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I count it all joy to be among you. Uh, and uh, just in case any one of you I have overlooked not having shaken your hand, I apologize, all right? Because uh, every service I show up at about 9.30, uh, even 9.20. Uh, just in case you want to have a chat, you want to have a chat with me, you can come early and the next time I show up. We can talk, uh, you know, we can encourage one another. Anyway, okay, let, let's begin, all right? Now, Dr. Uh, Kwan, 11.05 already, uh, uh, please. Uh. <laughs> Amen. God does intervene according to his time. I have no doubts about that. But for this morning, I want to share with you Something that of greater importance. You can have God by your side. I don't want God just to intervene once in a while. I want God to be by my side. Now, this is the discipline. A very typical discipline next to prayer. Sit with God. By that I meant, read the word of God. The first thing in the morning, the second thing in the afternoon, and then the third thing at night. In today's context, of course, we all know God is not sitting in a physical form, but God has given us the book, only one book. That book is full of God's revelation in the form of command, instruction, encouragement, his revelatory love to all of us. So we don't just wait for God to intervene, but instead we do of a greater thing, right? We, want, we read the word of God, which I found out most of the people, Christian, you hardly know the word of God. So you have no sword, you have no shield, and then you're not prepared for the work. For the days, the challenge that will be thrown on you, right? I mean, for uh, Megan's son's case, I, 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 I'm quite uh, in touch with, uh, you know, what is happening in the world. In, in fact, you know, I've been praying for, you know, the war that is going on in the Middle East between Hamas and Palestinian and, and even Israel. Uh, uh, there, the other side, we have... Uh, uh, Ukraine and Russia, isn't it? And Myanmar is having war now. Before I go on this message, I want to say something to all of you, all right? Something a little bit detour. I'm one who is who pro God. I don't pro Israel, neither do I pro, I pro Hamas. You see, I have once posted on Facebook. I say, let there be a ceasefire. A lot of people are dying. That include little children who do not know left and right. Immediately, I've got some response from some of my good friends who are quite theologically sound. And then they bring up the issue that Israel 
Israel, the chosen nation of God. I want to clarify a little bit. I'm not trying to sound political here, all right? I'm not apologizing, uh, you know, trying to, you know. But I just need to help you all to understand. This is from an understand from the scripture. Listen, Israel, the national state of Israel, they are not Christian. They are Jewish. But I must say, just like in any country, they are Christian in Israel. I've been there. I, I was very honored to have walked upon many places which they claim that Jesus has walked upon. I'm honored. All right? But when it comes to war, right, we have to pray according to what is morally right. You know what I mean? So I face some opposition, say, oh, oh no, uh, God uh, say end time is coming. So I know God in the end time that has been revealed in scripture is coming. In fact, in fact, it's getting very intense now. Okay? But never tell us, never tell us, we pray for peace. You know why? We don't pray to keep on killing, isn't it? We pray for peace so that, so that, even in the Muslim nation, allow time that God may still want to save some. That is the idea. Some, of course, some of my friends oppose me. Some, uh, you know, come into my defense and all that. I want to say this. Some people are very caught up in the Old Testament, overlooking the New Testament. Some people will just read into the New Testament and overlook the Old It is not right. It is not right. But you, today you learn something. Now, I, I, I want to say this to you. War lingers on. Dead cow continue to rise. Every day I switch on TV, it saddens me. How children or innocent women, oh, they were killed. This is political. This is not a holy war. This, you see, it's not between good and evil. It's not even between God and his adversary, Satan. The present war that are going on. Please remember, I know from the Old Testament very well, to the best of my knowledge, God has made a promise, a distinctive promise to Israel. One day, God will save the Israel. It doesn't mean all, but some. The Bible gives us a word, the remnant. Because Jews have actually rejected the Messiah. Even to an extent, he was put on the cross. You know why Old Testament, God make a lot of promise that, you know, anyone who come and uh, trying to uh, seize you, I will come into your defense. You know why? Because God in the Old Testament want to preserve Israel until Christ come, until Christ arrive. And yet it went proven that they rejected Christ. But God, but God promise is irrevocable. Re he still remember. I still remember. Yeah, he's my chosen one. Christ was born in Bethlehem. Never tell us, never tell us. Today in New Testament, grace has been extended to all beyond Jews, Gentiles. Anyone can be saved. No one comes short of God's saving hand if God ever wills it. Now, I want to say this. So, you see, it's not, it's evil against evil. It is not between God or what. It's flesh against flesh. This is a political war. And sometimes if you are not careful, some of the nation will be used as proxy war. I'm sure you all know what does that mean, all right? Now, I want to, I want to say this to you before I go on with today. Not actually message. I don't have time for a message, but maybe for devotion, which I think is very important. The OT, the Old Testament and the New Testament, they are inseparable. You ought to read the whole book. All right? That is. But never tell us it's distinguishable. It's distinguishable. 
Oh, yeah? Now, OT and new T are inside. You cannot separate both of them. Okay? They are like water and ink. You cannot separate water and ink. Without water, there's no ink. Without ink, the color, there's no <laughs> right? Water itself cannot be used to write anything. But never tell us distinguishable. The OT and UT, even though they are inseparable, but they are distinguishable. Like fire and smoke. When you put when you start a fire, fire you can see, but the smoke also you can. So always read the Old Testament and the New Testament with the softened heart, not with a stony heart. Christ said, those who kill by sword, they will surely die by sword. I desire mercy. Please, I'm not against Israel or the Jews. No, I'm just saying God, instead of pro-Israel or pro-Palestinian, I pro you. Reason is because more time is needed so that the gospel of repentance could be spread to all. Okay? So anyway, that is so much for the current event thing. Now, listen. Uh, God intervening at the right time is good. But don't just wait for that. You don't go and do something stupid or sinful, or offensive, or criminal thing, you know, and then wait for God to intervene, isn't it? All right? Preventive is always better than cure, that's for sure. All right? That's why I say, you and me, please do not just come to church. Do not just do this and do that. I know we are very busy this month, all right? There are a lot of things to do. But please begin by sitting with God, which I take it to mean, Read the Word of God. Let somebody teach you. Learn together with the rest. Because without the Word of God, you have no weapon to defend. Let's just say attack. Okay? Now, let's begin with this. I thank God for Hebrew writer. Now, it begins, in the past, God spoke to our ancestor through the prophet's at many times and in various ways, right? The Old Testament, the prophets, you know. but in this day, right? Are, you, are we reading together? But in this last day, he has spoken to us by his son. Several times in the New Testament record, God's voice came from above by the work of the Holy Spirit and said, this is my son. Listen to him. Whom he appointed heir of all things. And to whom also he made the universe. Jesus is not just what you understand as a son of God. He's co-equal to God. He's co-assistant with God. He, has co he is co-eternal with God. He is God. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, of God's being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. And after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angel as the name he has inherited is superior to dust. In this last day, take note, in this last day, he has spoken to us by his son. I'm not against anyone. I only remember and realize Christ said, Go, make disciples of all nations. Teach them all that I have commanded you. And his promise is, I will be with you always, always. Some people want to help God fulfilling his end time prophecy. You don't do that. You have no business in doing that. Let me give you an example, Dr. Kwan. Huh? 
Judas was actually planned by God to sell off Jesus, isn't it? Right? To betray Jesus. But in that context, do we pray? Judas, go, go and sin against God. Go, go, go and do something that is. You, know, you don't do that. God is a spiritual being, encompasses morality. We are asked to pray and do what is right. God's timing will come. You have no worry about that. Let's pray for peace so that time will, time will be there so that some from each side, from any of the nation, may come to the Lord according to God's will. Listen to his son. That is the pinnacle of the whole Bible put together. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, 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 I've just said, and I want to repeat, God has not forgotten his promise. When the day come, tribulation come, some, the remnant among the Jews will be saved. Even in some of the unlikely country, I believe some will be saved. Okay, now let's move fast forward, okay? Now, Hebrews chapter 1, 2, 3 establish who Christ is. He's supreme being. He's, uh, he, he's, he's above all. Not, he's not angel. He's not prophet. He's above all, right? Fast forward, Hebrews chapter 4, 14 to 16, right? Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Dr. Guan has said that you know, when during the Holy Communion. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to, to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way. Just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. You mentioned that, right? So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Now, I'm condensing my message into a very short one. But don't think short is not as powerful or as heavy as some long message, isn't it, right? Listen to me. Listen to me. This coming Christmas, we are living in a time of hostility, chaos. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. So treat it as if this is going to be the last Christmas you're going to celebrate so that you will value it more. But please, it's not about Santa Claus. Which is, a, which is a myth, something that, you know, well, they are actually quite harmless myths to be read, actually, right? Some of them, the, you know, the reindeer are quite funny too, you know? But it's just that do not let those myths distract you from the person you're supposed to celebrate, all right? Do not let shopping do not let all, solve, all the program and all the activities distract you from the subject of the occasion. Please, please, sit with God. Listen to Him and hear Him. If not, you have no word from Him and you do not know how to go about living your life. When issue come, when temptation fall upon you, you are helpless. And then you are caught up in something and then you wait for God intervening. Now, our stunning negligence. This is a fast-moving world now. I'm sure you all know. We are bombarded by all sorts of things. The first thing, we wake up in the morning, we on our phone. Maybe some of us don't even off our phone, all right? We own our phone, WhatsApp message, TikTok, TikTok, you know, YouTube, news, 
all sort of things. We have been bombarded by, you know, everything, everything fast. That's why I call this is the accelerating world now. Everything fast. You see, fate, all these are fatal attraction. But sorry, distraction. All these are fatal distraction. I am sometimes I'm quite guilty because I'm quite concerned about the war that is there, here, there, and all that. Uh, I just I, I want to you know know sometimes it's because I you know being being a pastor a teacher sometimes I'm asked for my opinion. I, I have to be ready to give an answer for my faith. That's what uh, the Bible teaches. You have to be you have to be uh, ready to give a reason for your faith. Okay, so. All these relationship, la, activities, la, fun, la, whether it comes in the form of multimedia, all these can be, all these are fatal distraction. And then we, you know, we have all our sensual, they play all upon our sensual ones. I'm sure you know, you know, Facebook, whenever you click on something, Right, a chain of the same kind of post or advertisement, or trying to sell you something will come on your phone, isn't it? Right, so we are distracted, so very beyond our capability to hold back, and the whole, uh, you know, all this commercialism is actually hitting on our sensual ones, you know, our sensual, our bodily ones, which are quite natural. That's why, that's why whenever we are tempted, most of the time we fall prey to it. You go to, you go to a shopping mall now, you know, right? Jingle bell, jingle all the way. You know why they sing so fast? Buy now, buy now, buy it all the way. <laughs> oh, it's Christmas. Of course it's Christmas. Who is the subject of the Christmas? Okay, now in dire needs of attention, another issue is we all need attention. We need attention so much. Listen to me. Jesus hide himself sometimes from the crowd. Very often, uh, many, quite many times in the, in the New Testament narrative, Christ actually hid himself. Are you present there? He hide himself from the crowd. He doesn't want so much attention. You know why? You know why? We live in a world that teaches us to be outstanding, successful, you know, be the most beautiful of all, be the most excellent of all. And we are all into the race, the mouse race. We're trying to outrun one another. You see, all these are stunning. It caused our negligence of that one thing. Share with you another passage, right? It's not uh, uh, this passage. A lot of people overlook what it teaches, but I believe it has got something to, you know, what we are sharing today. I'm going to share with you this passage in Luke 10 about Martha and Mary. You'll be surprised. The, the teaching, they are under, they are hidden within. It teaches about sitting with God. In today's context, means you open the Bible. That's the Word of God. The Word of God represents God. And when you go into the Word of God systematically, learn with others, let somebody teach you, and then you put in an effort yourself, I tell you, it's like sitting with God. It's like Christ is right in front of you. You see? Now, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that he 
that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? It's a complaint. Tell her to help me. Sounding quite hostile, actually. Let's continue. And Jesus answered, Seldom Christ called somebody named twice, you know, which I take it to mean this way. Mother, the second mother, Mother, you know, sometimes our parents uh, want, to, want to get our attention. Uh, he said, Sam, uh, sometimes I just don't care uh, when I was young. Uh, Sam, what, 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 you know, by dragging of the name Cora, you know, it served like a brick. It exposes something that I was not doing right and needed to give full attention to what Christ said. Mata, Mata. You know why you call her once, she won't, she won't pay attention one? Because she was so busy preparing food. She was so caught up with all the... i give you a reason after what, all right? The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed. Then he sized it down. Indeed, only one. Indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better and the one. And it will not be taken away from her. Now, this is a passage that Jesus actually went to the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. All right? It has been used to teach many, many things. Okay? But let me tell you, mother, smile, must be thinking, wow, the Lord is in our home. What am I going to prepare for him to eat? And also the disciples. What will he think about the food I prepare? Do I have enough ingredients? Will I be able to serve him something that is good? You know what? In Jesus' time, hospitality is a social norm. You know, whenever somebody comes to your house, you have to give them the best you can. It's a social practice. Less to say, Jesus was in, his, in her home. So she must be thinking also, not about the food, but I wonder when Jesus walked in, the neighbors saw or not? I wonder when Jesus left this way, what would he think about our hospitality, our home? Why Mary is not helping me? I already have so much in my mind. The cooking, the preparation, and all the haunting, haunting uh, questions. Whether he like, whether the neighbor know or not, will the, will, the, will, will the last time Jesus went to another home, was the food better then? Listen to me. We're living in a world boom bothered by all sorts of distraction. Now, not all of them are sinful. I'm just making a comparison. I'm just giving you the most needful one. That is to learn the word of God. That is your weapon and also your shield against attack. If not, you will be mislead. You know, you'll be misled all the time and you don't even know. Everybody says something to you and, you know, perhaps quote one or two words and then you think that is right and you do this and do that. And on your own, you have no defense system. Worldly cares. No, it's good. Whenever I visit a home, they cook me a meal. Well, let me tell you honestly speaking. You know, in our cell group, whenever I say, okay, let's sing a few songs to exhort Christ. But now, let's sit down. 
open your Bible. I see some people still running up, preparing this. Actually, I don't like it. One. To be very honest, I don't like it. I don't like it. I choose not to eat also. You know why? That one thing I remember from this passage, sit down. Stop all your work. Right? If you want to prepare a meal, do it earlier without complaining, without having to go through your mind whether Sam will like the food, whether the people will enjoy. Don't do that. You can do all this without sacrificing that one thing. When time for word of God, sit down. Spiritually, it's like Christ is teaching us, sharing with us, commanding us. You know, when every time I walk into the church, I see some people who are very, you know, you know, they are very serving, serving attitude, which I appreciate. You know, uh, the usher and this. But please do not overlook that one thing. On Tuesday, when Pastor Kwan is teaching the Bible, right? Before study, make a point to to attend. You need some help. On your own, you won't do it. Or at least you won't do it efficiently. Should I ever start another Bible class? Now? I expect people to make a point to come and join because that is where you will grow. That is where you grow with the armor of God. We are not fighting f flesh and body, f flesh and blood. We are fighting against principality in the air. You cannot see that. So you need spiritual weapon, which is the mindful of God's word in every sense of the word. You see, serving. I bet, all right, why mother all, almost all of a sudden, you know, um, begin to be, to sound uh, not uh, courteous, not courteous, and also sound a little bit hostile. Why Mary is not? She said, why didn't you ask her to help me? You know why? She was caught up with all sorts of worldly care. Making sure Jesus enjoyed the food and then, you know, uh, um, maybe, you know, uh, saying that her food was the best among all. God cares less about all these things. Come on. Come on. That's why we, are, we have got so many worldly care, which some, like I said, some of them may not be bad thing, but they are certainly distraction. Okay? And misplay attention. Mother could be thinking, wow, you know, well, I will lose face, you know. Let me put in a little bit of my imagination. I will lose faith if, if, if Christ walk out here, not a happy, full uh, man, you know, and, and, and you compare with another home that he's going to. You know, what the, you know why, why, why Mary is not helping me? If he help me, we can even make a, make, we can even serve him with better food. All this misplay attention. I'm not asking you to cut off from the world, all right? over, you know, whatever, uh, through the multimedia, I'm saying that one thing, that one needful thing is, apart attending church, learning alongside with others, you have to spend time reading the Word of God. If you do not know how, let somebody guide you. of power and it's pack of things that you need in your daily life not just a particular situation and seeing not he, Jesus you know you see, Mary and uh, Martha know Christ in a way right uh, they know who Christ is yet Christ was sitting there she was seeing Christ, but yet not hearing. What's the point of God in your house? Your Bible is the representative in us, you know, in a reading form of who God is, who Christ is, is in your house. 
You see it, you see your Bible, but you don't hear it, isn't it? You know, I got many Bible in my home because of different translation and all that. I see those every time I come back to the house, I walk to my room, I see books, I see Bible. But, I, but am I hearing what those books, especially the Bible, is speaking to me? Hearing. You see, you know, in the Old Testament it says Christ is the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting fa father, prince of peace. All this excellent title given to Christ. And he spoke a lot of things in the new in, in the in the Bible. He even prophesied about him in the Old Testament through the mouth of all the prophets. And later on, during Jesus' three year ministry, he, he, he spoke a lot of things, he did a lot of things. And in the book of, uh, in all the epistles, Paul wrote a lot about Christ. And in the book of Revelation, John saw Christ in vision, telling him what is to come. God of all this title is right in front of us. Tell me. You see them, but do you hear? Now, I, I want to... Uh, shorten my message, all right? I'm going to conclude right now, all right? So, God is in your house to His Word. Don't have to go around looking for Him. Don't just wait for Him to intervene, which He will, when, when you know, according to His will. But it's right there. Spend time. You need help. You need help. That's why we come to do group Bible studies. There's some principle to read God's word in the scripture. Okay, now, there are three things I want to say to you before I, you know, uh, I let Kwan go and teach you know, uh, the baptismal class, right? The first one is necessity. Everything are needful, but the true need one that is needful or necessary is to know God and know Christ and hear and listen to Him. John 17, 3. Jesus shortened the complexity of salvation into one shortened, into only one sentence. During His prayer, the last hour before He was arrested and put on the cross, he prayed to God in the hearing of his disciple. Eternal life. That is the condensed statement of salvation, right? Eternal life is to know God and the one whom he sent. Jesus Christ. This is eternal life. Of course, much more can be said. But this condensed form is enough to get you excited that you need to know God and need to know Christ. By what mean? By what mean? Yeah, Holy Spirit is, is real. But do you know not the whole Bible is inspired by the Holy Spirit? So when you read his inspired word, the Holy Spirit will be there with you and will be there to, 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 to help you, to energize you, to illuminate God's secret of revelation to you. Holy Spirit, most of the time, huh, most of the time, except in some very isolated incident, work on us as Christian, as believer, through the word. That's why Christ said, the, the, I will send another helper, that is the Holy Spirit, right? He will convict, he will convict the world of sin, isn't it? He will tell you what I have said. Simple. 
you want you want to solve upgrade your worship you have to know the word of god in fact that will help you to choose the right song i want to say something about you know just now while we uh giving our offering uh, uh more love, more time all right right i i, I would like to uh, you know, just give an advice. Huh? You know, after everyone finished giving, don't just cut the song. More love, more... Pop. Oh, no, no. That, what the, was the song sung? Huh? Uh, give that... Uh, pop. No more. I, I usually get very stuttered one that when the song... Don't, don't do that. Slowly taper off. Slowly fade it off, all right? Slowly bring down all your... Uh, give that... Uh, Huh? Over there. <laughs> uh, I'm just joking, okay? But anyway, I, I, let me continue here, okay? Now, the first lesson is, is necessity. Huh? Second, I use this word felicity. Felicity means happiness. Happiness. Mary had chosen the happy pursuit. Now, in Philippians 3, it, Paul says, you know, I... I, I as compared to Christ, uh, all other things, everything that actually I have gained, they are all dung. They are all irrelevant. They are not the most precious one. As compared to, I have gained Christ. I want to read the whole, whole, uh, the whole passage. Here. So I, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing Worth of knowing Christ Jesus. Paul being of someone who was exceptionally, you know, you know, uh, brain and mind. Right? You know, in, in today's context, Paul could be a prime minister. You know, he's capable he's, he's capable of thinking and all that. But yet he say, I count everything lost as compared to the surpassing knowledge. Of knowing Christ, which means he say to know God and to know Christ surpasses all other things. If you are a true believer. Okay, next one. So felicity means it's happy. It's happy. You know, when you say I count it, all other things are lost, you know, but as compared to knowing Christ, you're saying this is my happy pursuit. That's where joy comes from. The next one is security. That's why Jesus said to Martha, Mary had chosen indeed the better one, the one that is needful. Never mind, there's no food preparation. Don't worry about what people think. Sit before me and listen to me. And Christ went on to say, it will never be taken away from her. When you spend time with God, beside prayer, but reading word with an objective to know Him and to, you know, to be inspired by Him, to be encouraged by Him, to be assured by Him, and also sometimes to be convicted by Him. Also. That is a happy pursuit which will bring about security. I want to read Romans chapter 8, 35. I want to read the whole thing here, okay? <clears throat> Who shall sh separate us from the love of God? You want to know the, you, 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 we keep singing love of God, yeah? But you know the love of God is not the kind of love that human extend to one another. It's not a romantic-sized love. If I may, I would like to add a prefix to it. Holy love. Holy love. Put a preface to grace. Holy grace. Holy mercy. There are blessedness within, which means it's redemptive. God loves us in a redemptive way, you know, not a romantic way. Not just provide company to you. 
He loves us with a redemptive purpose. He loves us in order to save us. All the attributes of God are with redemptive purpose. Sometimes we make another Christian or believer happy. It ends there. There's no redemptive objective. When we love someone, we want the person to end up in eternal life. We want to see the person even in life after this. Isn't it true? Not? true not? So that must be done through sharing of the word of God, the word of truth. So now, Romans, who shall separate us from the love of God? Because Paul, Paul knows it. Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, or danger, or sword? No. Ajama, 37 to 39. No, 